Philip Shortman, aka Arnold's grandpa. Grandpa Phil was a thin elderly man who had bushy gray eyebrows, an oddly shaped head with a bump on the back, a cleft chin, and a protruding Adam's apple. He wore a white shirt with red suspenders, brown pants, and brown shoes. Grandpa Phil spoke in a distinctive voice. Can't you short man? That was lent by Dan Castellaneta, who also voices Homer Simpson, Mayor Quimby, and Abraham Simpson. Grandpa Phil was born as Philip Shortman, and his humble life began way back in 1917. Grandpa was raised by his mother and father in the same boarding house where he resided during the series. When he was in grade school, Phil met Gertie. Gertie was in the same class as Phil and treated him similar to how Helga treated Arnold. Twas Philip who did it, Mrs. Crenshaw! <laughs> Gertie was best friends with another girl in the class named Mitzi. Mitzi is Phil's twin sister who was the oldest by six minutes, so that makes me his big sister. They had a family dog that they loved, but it tragically got hit by a milk truck and was put to sleep. This tragic incident led to both Phil and Mitzi holding a grudge that caused them to stop talking to each other for 71 years. When Grandpa was a kid, he enjoyed playing Chinese checkers and baseball with the kids in his neighborhood. Growing up, Phil's grandfather instilled a strong work ethic into young Phil. He encouraged Phil to prioritize work instead of play. For example, during the winter, Phil's grandfather made him collect firewood instead of letting him play with his friends. But his grandfather, like Grandpa Phil, had a sense of humor and a compassionate heart. Let the game begin! Grandpa Phil eventually had to drop out of grade school. The instability of the economy during the Great Depression resulted in many kids dropping out of school to work and help support their families. Once Phil grew older, he enlisted in the war effort himself. In the 40s, Phil fought in World War II. However, exactly what he did is questionable considering his tendency to exaggerate his stories. Other than serving in the war, Phil also mentioned that he worked for the railway. Phil later became a business owner. He started earning an income by renting out the rooms of his residence, a boarding house called Sunset Arms. At some point in his life, Phil married his grade school classmate, Gertie. The radio, those little teacups from limo. Together, they had Miles Shortman, their only child. Miles was raised in the boarding house just like Phil was. I would say Phil and Gertie raised Miles pretty well considering he grew up to become an anthropologist and a doctor. Phil was proud of his son and supported his life's adventures as he traveled around the world helping people in need. When Miles disappeared, Phil hid his sadness in an effort to be strong for his grandchild. You're not a bad short man. I'm, I'm scared I can't find my mommy and daddy. Oh, now don't cry, you poor little fella. Phil painted Miles and Stella as adventurous superheroes, which put Arnold's mind at ease. Phil's approach to dealing with the disappearance of his son showed how much he wanted Arnold to live a happy life. He didn't want Arnold to be upset, so he always made sure he had something to smile about whenever he was reminded of his parents. Grandpa's knack for storytelling extended to scary stories as well. He happily entertained Arnold with creepy tales like one about a haunted train. Sometimes late at night, uh, you can hear the whistle blow. And another about a ghost of a former boarding house resident named Four-Eyed Jack. Throughout the Hey Arnold series, Grandpa acted as a father figure to Arnold. Whenever Arnold didn't know what to do, he would turn to Grandpa. Hey Grandpa, I was wondering if I could talk to you. I've kind of got a problem. 
While the quality of Grandpa's advice varied, he did have many years of life experience that Arnold knew he could benefit from. Grandpa was a light-hearted and funny guardian to Arnold. He was usually fun to be around, but he was sometimes embarrassing. And I like the toilets shaped like dinosaur eggs. Oh, those aren't the toilets, those are the sinks. Those are the sinks, then that means I wash my hands in the Another significant relationship in Phil's life was his marriage with Pookie. Phil and Pookie were an unusual pair. Their personalities seemed to clash, with Phil being more strict and sensible, while Pookie was more carefree and spontaneous. Pookie had an eccentric personality and sometimes possibly suffered from delusions, but Phil always stuck by her. The couple accepted each other as they were and lived within a non-traditional family with Arnold and the boarding house residents. Speaking of the boarders, Grandpa Phil's relationship with them was complicated. As the landlord of Sunset Arms, Phil was in charge. He was responsible for collecting the rent, making repairs, and constantly played the peacemaker role during squabbles. While Phil was able to handle these stresses, in one episode, we saw his breaking point. That episode was titled Casa Paradiso. There, Grandpa considered selling the boarding house and moving to Florida. And he almost did it too. But at the last last moment, Grandpa reluctantly caved into the Borders' pleads, and everything went back to how it was. This shows how even though the Borders annoyed him, he didn't have the heart to break apart the family that they were. Out of all the Borders, the one who got on Grandpa's nerves the most would have to be Oscar. Can I have his room tonight? My ceiling leaks in the rain, and it makes me sad to watch Susie sleep in the puddle. Not in your life, Kakaiko. Oscar disrupted the peace within the boarding house by deceptively coming up with many self-centered schemes. Oscar was always on the lookout for an easy way to get money and even once tried to charge kids who were being rescued by Grandpa. Other than the boarding house residents, Grandpa also spent time with Gerald's dad, Martin Johansson. The pair bonded over both serving in wars, Grandpa served in World War II, while Martin served in the Vietnam War. They also both enjoyed being in the great outdoors, which is evident by the episode Fishing Trip. Grandpa was very healthy and athletic for an 81-year-old. Even his doctor was impressed. At this point, it's clear Grandpa had many positive attributes. He was humorous, compassionate, loving, responsible, creative, heroic, kind, athletic, but he also had quite a few faults. For one, Grandpa was really stubborn and had poor relationships with many people throughout his life. For example, in addition to his 71-year grudge against his sister, we saw Grandpa confront many rivals, Rex Smythe Higgins, Robbie Fisher, Jimmy Kafka, and Big Bob. In all instances, we saw Grandpa's competitive nature come out as he tried to beat his rivals. But in Grandpa's defense, his poor relationships with these characters were likely, at least partly, due to their attitudes and pretentious natures, so it's understandable how he was irritated by them. Another fault of Grandpa was that he was a pretty bad driver. Grandpa was involved in two car accidents during the series, one with Big Bob and another with the poor Jolly Ollie Man. I love you, dear. That's nice. You crazy blind as a bad old buzzard! Don't think I didn't see ya! Phil was also quite the ladies' man. He even hit on the Jolly Olly man when he was disguised as a woman. That's not the only thing that's well preserved around here, lady. How do you do? My name is Ivana Devansovic. But one time, Arnold's grandpa crossed the line and did something that was pretty inappropriate. In the episode Back to School, we saw the senior citizen about to sneak into a PG-13 movie late at night with two sixth grade girls. I wonder what Pookie would do if she saw grandpa behave like that. Or 
what her thoughts were on Grandpa's celebrity crush on Hedy Lamar. So that's it for Grandpa's faults. That's what it looks like. In my favorite episode that features Grandpa titled Back to School, we saw Phil confront one of his fears in life. Phil decides he wants to go back to school to graduate from grade school. At first, he does really well and passes the 4th and 5th grades. But when he gets to the 6th grade, he breaks down. He feels like it's too difficult, and he admits that he has a fear of failure. Upon hearing this in typical Arnold fashion, he pledges to help his grandfather to graduate. And with Arnold's help, Phil reached his goal and was awarded his grade school diploma. Congratulations, Phil! Don't hug me. Oh, okay. Oh, what the heck? Come here, you! In conclusion, Philip Shortman's 81 years of life was filled with many hardships. He lived through the stress of World War II and the Great Depression. He suffered the loss of his beloved family dog, lost 71 years of a relationship with his twin sister, was bullied by Gertie in grade school, had to drop out of school to work, went through the heartache of having a missing son, dealt with constantly arguing tenants, and had many enemies. But through all this, Grandpa Phil was still an upbeat and cheerful man. He was a healthy veteran and took great pride in the fact that he had served his country. He mended his relationship with his sister and married Gertie. He returned to school after he dropped out about 70 years before and graduated. He accepted his son's disappearance and focused on making Arnold's happiness a priority. He decided against selling the boarding house, keeping the non-traditional family intact. Grandpa had his weaknesses, but he also possessed the strength to overcome life's challenges. He was resilient, optimistic, courageous, and he was exactly the kind of grandfather Arnold needed. So with that, we are now at the end of my Hey Arnold character analysis video of Daily Phil. Woohoo! Hit me! <laughs> All right, Grandpa! What do you think of Grandpa? What was your favorite Grandpa moment? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Do things, that's no fair! Shut your pie hole, Kakashka! You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at DialUpDigest. Until next time, my friends, dialing out.